Hi, I'm Dr. Tony Mark, endoscopic spine specialist, and today I'd like to talk about toxic annular tears of the lumbar spine. I use the word toxic because it refers to the ones that hurt. Most annular tears don't hurt, and therefore people don't usually pay too much attention to them. In my experience, toxic annular tears are the most frustrating and most underdiagnosed cause of chronic low back pain. Well, what are your complaints? Well, your complaints are probably the worst position is sitting, my back just goes out, exercises make the pain worse, and what insights do you get after you see a medical specialist after a consultation? Well, there's no disc herniation responsible for your leg pain. The MRI is read essentially normal or just some bulges, which everybody seems to have. And if you had an epidural, that didn't really help for any length of time either. And nobody can tell me why my back hurts or goes out. So what's the diagnosis? What's the cause of my back pain and back going out? The big problem with not having a diagnosis is that there's no treatment plan. When you say, I've seen more than three specialists and nobody can tell me why my back hurts, chances are very good that you have a toxic annular tear. Let's look at a good example. Here's Janet L. who gave me permission to uh, record her history and actually she gives a little uh, video presentation later on. Janet L. was a woman in her 60s who I saw 18 months after a car accident in which her motorhome was T-boned by a car going at a high rate of speed. Her complaints were left low back pain, left leg pain, the MRI showed a minimal disc bulge, and she'd seen five specialists without getting any answers about her low back pain. Let's take a quick look at uh, Janet's MRI scan. Here we're looking at the sagittal view from the side, lumbar three, lumbar four, lumbar five, sacral one. And this was read by the radiologist as a slight annular uh, uh, bulge. So a slight disc bulge, nothing to mention about an annular tear. Same here on the axial slice, really relatively normal appearing uh, disc with no disc uh, protrusions or bolt, it really just a disc bulge at the most. Well. The MRI doesn't seem to be very, very much help, so what's next? I suggest a CT discogram. A CT discogram is performed after a discogram, and which is discogram followed by a CT scan. Well, why a CT scan? Well, it gives you a much better three-dimensional perception or picture than an X-ray does. Let's go back to the MRI scan. Remember, there was nothing but a disc bulge at lumbar 4 5 in either view from the side, the sagittal view, or the axial view. Let's take a look at the same view with a CT scan after a discogram. Look at the CT scan. Here we have the same vertebrae, lumbar 3, lumbar 4, lumbar 5, sacral 1 and we have the discs in between the vertebrae. Here we can see the dye which has been injected into the center of the disc at lumbar four or five, but look at this where the arrow is pointing to this blush of dye back here. If we look a little, the X, it doesn't show that great on the x-rays, what I was saying the CT is so helpful for, but the CT demonstrates here in the axial view Here's where it was initially injected, but it's leaked out here. It's leaking out of here and out to the edges. So I know this looks like the right, but these are always flipped images. This represents the left. So this is the cause of Janet's left low back pain. And as far as her leg pain goes, you can see the dye leaking into the spinal canal and touching the dura. These nerves are affected by this incredibly inflammatory byproduct from an annular tear that's leaking out into the spinal canal. This accounts for her left low back pain as well as her leg pain. Really important. Well, what's going on here? I thought the MRI showed everything. Well, as you can see, the MRI does not show annular tears very well, and sometimes not at all. Well, now we have a diagnosis. 
which means we can offer a treatment plan. In Janet's case, I was able to offer her a transframinal discectomy performed with this endoscope. A transframinal discectomy is what I did for Janet. And would you like to see her reaction eight weeks after her surgery? My name is Janet Lee, and I give Dr. Tony Moore permission to videotape this. Um, I was diagnosed with an annular tear by Dr. Mork. Um, before that, I was in an accident um, two years ago, a motor vehicle accident, and I went to several doctors, orthopedic doctors. They couldn't help me, had MRIs done, um, had physical therapy, acupuncture, chiropractic, swimming therapy, exercise, um, epi steroid epidural, and nothing worked. And after seeing the last doctor who was very high profile in our area, we said that was it. And a, a good friend of ours who's a, a chiropractor, he says you need to go see Dr. Mork. So anyway, we um, sent Dr. Mork a copy of my MRI. He talked to us on the phone for half an hour. It was very easy. And then he says, I really believe I can help you. And so we went down to Newport Beach and... Um, by the time we got there, I was limping, I was stooped forward, and um, after the surgery, um, I, I, we were walking out of the surgery center and Dr. Mark or, and my husband said, you're walking straight up and down. And it was like, I am. And I hadn't done that in months. So I am sold on it. I am now eight and a half weeks out from the surgery and I have a Fitbit. And I'm walking between 10,000 and 11,000 steps a day. And um, I am thrilled. It's changed my life. And I am so very thankful for Dr. Mork. Well, thank you very much for watching. I think you can see that uh, Janet had a dramatic response to the uh, removal, partial removal of the torn annular tear inside of her lumbar 4 or 5 disc. And... Uh, uh, I hope that this gives you a little bit of hope if you've been searching around for the cause of your low back pain, but the MRI is read as negative and the pain just continues on. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you've got other questions, uh, please don't hesitate to either look at my website or give me a call at the office. Thank you.